G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Are you frustrated with your electric fence? Are you finding that it's not making the advertised length that rather than a wallop you're getting more than a tickle or that your battery's wearing out and you're having to buy new ones all the time? Then you've found the right video. I've got a $15 solution to that that'll take you under 15 minutes and it will make a world of difference to your electric fence performance. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's get going. Your earth. This is the most commonly overlooked and underrated part of electric fencing. And it's interesting that in the making of this video, I actually went to three different rural supply stores and none of them had a proper earth rod. And one of them was even a rural supplies company. I won't name them because they'd be very embarrassed. They did not have any earth rods. So I ended up going to Rural Fence and Trade in Coldstream, about a half hour drive, to get one of these. Why would I drive for half an hour to get a metal rod? Well, it's actually really, really important. The most common problem that we see with electric fences is that people think just because the star picket's made of metal, that it will actually be a good earth. It's not. If you've ever tried to weld a star picket, you know that they're really bad to weld. They're painted, they're, well, they're, they're covered in tar. Um, they rust in the ground. And more importantly, I'm running galvanized wire. The star picket's not galvanized. So what's gonna happen is because we're pumping electricity through this system constantly, this is gonna act like a sacrificial anode and it's gonna rust really, really quickly. So I'm going to lose, through that corrosion, contact with the ground, I'm going to lose a good earth, and the performance of my fence is going to rapidly decline. And what happens? Also, when you attach your electric fence to a really poor earth, the energizer is actually going to pump electricity back through the battery in the wrong direction, and that's going to fry your battery. So if you've ever had problems with your battery not lasting long, check your earth. You're probably killing your battery by pumping electricity back through it because of the tremendous resistance involved. So let's fix that today with our earth rod, our proper earth rod that's made of galvanized steel because we're using galvanized wire. So it's quite a long rod and we're going to have to hammer it almost completely into the ground. We want as much contact with the ground as possible. Normally about two feet or 600 millimeters is a good connection with the ground. Now I'm just hooking up my hot wires with a piece of insulated wire and I'm going to show you a trick to save you a couple of dollars. You know those little screw type attachment things that people sell to hook up hot wires? You don't need them. All you've got to do is cut some insulation off from around your insulated ground wire and then pull it out a little bit leaving a bit of a handle here. All I then have to do is tie this around my two hot wires and they're joined together and I don't have to spend oh, about six dollars on clips. Now you'll notice that I've connected the earth rod to both of the uncharged wires in the electric fence. This is a four strand fence. So I've got a charged wire here, I've got a charged wire here with the red charge clip on it and then I've got an uncharged wire that's simply attached to the post and an uncharged wire that's simply attached to the post. I've connected both of those wires to my earth. Now some people will tell you that you can just connect this clip, this green clip, straight to your earth post. And you can. But there's a bit of a problem. In the middle of summer, all your soil dries out. So if the only earth point is right underneath the electric fence charger, when your animal is 500 meters over there in the paddock on the other direction, the electrons have got to travel through dry ground. And there's a lot of resistance through dry ground. So the performance of the electric fence declines in dry weather. By connecting your earth to wires in your fence, you've effectively got an earth wire running around the entire fence. When the ground dries out, your animal's still going to get a shock from touching two of the wires. Smart operators will also, about every 500 metres or so, put in another earth picket and connect it to those. So no matter where the animal is, 
in the paddock, they're near an earth and they're near their charge wire. We're using 2.65 wire, so we get plenty of electrical flow through the charge wire. We're using 2.65 earth wire, so we're getting plenty of electrical flow through that. If you're on sandy soil, you'd probably want to bring your earths even closer still. The, you cannot put too many earths into an electric fence. It's really, really critical. People often underestimate the importance of having a good earth. You spend a couple of hundred dollars on your electric fence and you don't put in a $10 earth, earth stake, your fence is going to fail on you. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you like this video and you like more fencing tips, please subscribe. I've got plenty more and there's a new video each week. Cheers guys, see you later on.